Models are produced in SOLIDWORKS by creating 3D geometry from 2D sketch profiles. This is accomplished by using extrusions, which extends a profile along a path, and this then becomes solid geometry. The two most common types of extrusions in SOLIDWORKS are extruded bosses and extruded cuts. Bosses are used to add material by taking a 2D profile and extending it along a path. Usually it's perpendicular to the sketch profile. Cuts are used to remove material by taking a 2D profile and extending it along a path, which again is usually perpendicular to the sketch profile. So a cut is the opposite to an extruded boss. So both are used in the same way by taking a 2D profile and extending it along a path and either adding material or removing material. In this lesson, we'll take this base plate and we'll add a cylindrical extrusion to the top. And then we will cut away a rectangular hole through the middle of that extrusion. So here we have a simple part that uses a basic profile. It then uses an extrude boss, an extrude cut, and a fillet, which just goes around the outside edge here. And we are going to use this part to first create a sketch, which then we can use to create an extruded boss, a cylindrical shape up the top. And then in the middle of that, we want a, a square cut out through the part. On the left-hand side of the screen here, on the uh, feature manager tree, you can see that the boss extrude, the original one is already here. And if you expand that, you can see the sketches that were used to create that feature. If you were to click on the sketch, you can actually make this sketch visible in the graphics window at all times. And you can do that by clicking on the sketch and clicking on the show icon. And you can see the sketch is now visible in the graphics window. You might want to do this if you need to use it as some sort of reference. It's not often used, but you can do that. You'll also notice that the icon has turned blue to say that the sketch is visible. And if you want to turn that off, you can just click on it again. Click on the eye icon, which now says hide. It will change to a grayed out icon and the sketch is now gone. The very first thing we need to do is actually create the 2D profile that we can use to extrude. So of course we need to create a sketch on this top front face. And as you know, we can create a sketch by just clicking on the face and going to sketch or by going to the sketch over in the tools. With the sketch activated, the first thing we wanna do is create a circle. And this circle is just dragging out to here. And before we carry on, I just wanna show you a quick tip in SOLIDWORKS with creating entities and having the ability to set dimensions to them in the same command. So you may notice that when I create an entity like a circle, a little dialog box is showing, which is asking for a measurement. So if I was to say 50, it will put it in and add the dimension for me. Normally the procedure would be that you may have to create a circle and then dimension it. So it's an extra step and you can see my method is a little quicker. If you want that same feature available in your SOLIDWORKS, you can change that in the options. So if you go up to the tool here, the little gear icon, drop that down and go to options. In the sketch section, you'll see the enable on sketch numeric input on entity creation. You want that ticked and you also want to create dimension only when value is entered. So that means whenever you draw an entity like a square or a circle or a line, uh, you can, before placing it with the second click, you can just type in a number for the length you want or the diameter or whatever it is, uh, and it will create the dimension and size it to that dimension. So it just saves an extra step of creating it and then creating the dimension on top. So you can do it all in the one command. So I recommend having that on. Anyway, we don't need these, so we'll delete them. Next thing we need to do, we actually want this circle to be concentric or co-radial, sorry, with this filleted edge. So we want to click on that line and click on the inside filleted edge and click on the co-radial relation. So this will just make sure it's always following that same radius on the outside there. And for the second part of our profile, we need that square cutout, which is going to be in the middle. So we can use the center rectangle and just drag it out. Uh, I could put in a dimension, but I want this to be a perfect square. So I'm not gonna put in a dimension in this case. I'm just going to click on there. And I want to pick two of these lines, this one and this one. I want to make the relation there equal and click okay. So this will mean that those two sides are always equal, which will make all the rest of the sides equal to the other relations. And that way it's a perfect square. And I just need to make a dimension here. So I'm going to make that uh, 35. And you can see now that our sketch is now fully defined. So we can exit the sketch and clicking control seven to go into an isometric view. So we now have our two profiles in the one sketch, which is our 
circular extrusion and the center rectangle or square cutout. The next part will be to actually use the extruded boss to extend the 2D profile and create material. This can be done by going to features and then click on the extrude boss base, or you can click on the sketch in the feature manager tree and then going to extrude boss base. And in this case, I had the 2D profile already selected. So it's just gone ahead and use that as the profile. But if I didn't have a sketch selected and I clicked extrude boss base, it's going to ask you for a 2D profile or a sketch. So you can either click on it or you can expand this feature manager tree here and select your sketch that way. Once the command is activated, you'll notice a preview on the screen. So it is showing you a preview of what that extrusion is going to be. You can extend the extrusion by either dragging this arrow in that direction or dragging it the other direction. Uh, this is giving setting a length to the extrusion or you could set the actual length in the options on the side here. So you could say 100 millimeters. To change the direction, you could either drag it the other way or you could just click on this reverse direction button, which is going to switch the direction, obviously. So we want it in this direction. And we also want it to be 40 millimeters for our extrusion. The merge results checkbox, most of the time you'll always have this ticked and it just means that whatever you're extruding, if it's connected to some other body, it's going to merge it into one solid body. So if you for some reason wanted two separate bodies, so you're doing like a multi-body part which will be covered in a later lesson, you would untick that and then any extrusion is going to be separate to any other model bodies in the drawing. In this case we want the merge result because we're just after the single solid body. Also you'll notice there are a few other options over on the left so we'll just cover them quickly. The from sketch plane you can change so by default it's always going to extrude or cut from the sketch plane that it's been drawn on. You can change this to say like surface plane, vertex or offset uh, so there are some options here. Also the type of extrusion there are some options here so blind through all to surface etc etc. I recommend that if you don't know what these are to to watch the previous video which is about end conditions which will cover those two areas. In this case though we just want a blind extrusion. You can also set a secondary direction. So there is an option to do a mid plane which is going to extrude it equally on both sides but what you could do if you needed a, an extrusion to have a particular length on one side and then a particular length on the other you could make it two directions. So therefore you could say I want 10 millimeters on the left and 50 millimeters on the right. So you can do that with a direction too. Or you can even play around with that more. You could even say up to surface for the other side, but the direction one is a blind. So you have some options there as well. Thin feature is another option. And what you can do with thin feature is use a simple 2D sketch to create an extrusion. One way of looking at this is this profile we created is just a circle and a square. And if we pick thin feature, you can see here it's trying to extrude like the whole contour. But if we picked thin feature, you'll notice that it's kind of giving it some thickness. If we adjust that to say five millimeters, you can see it's changing. So what's happening here is imagine drawing a circle. If you wanted just a tube. Normally you'd have to draw two circles and then extrude that profile. But with thin feature, you could just draw the one circle and then it will create thickness around that 2D profile and extrude it. It also has the ability of extruding open paths, which means normally you'll need a full closed profile to be able to extrude it. But an open profile is when it doesn't connect back to the original point. So you might be drawing a square, but only do three sides. Normally you can't extrude that because it needs to be closed off to create the profile to extrude. But with thin feature, you can be extruding just the three lines and creating thickness around those parts. Uh, I won't go into more detail about that in this lesson, but just be aware thin feature is something you can look into in the future. So make sure that is unticked. And then selected contours. This is selecting the actual profiles or the contours that are being extruded. And I'll show you more on this once we actually do the extruded cut. But for now that's just how we want it. So after all that we can click OK and we now have our extruded cylindrical material. The next step is you'll notice that there's no hole in the middle and we want to punch that and cut it out to the other side. And because our original 2D profile we created both the cylinder and the square, we can use that same sketch again to create our extruded cut. 
So by going to the features, this time we want extruded cut and it's asking us for a sketch. Making sure our feature manager tree is expanded, we can expand this boss extrude that we created and then click on the sketch. And you'll notice at the moment it's still trying to use the original, the whole profile to cut backwards, but we only want that inside square. And this is where the selected contours comes into play. So if you drop that, right click in there and say clear selections. And then while making sure this is still highlighted, which you can tell because it's blue, we want to click that inside square contour as that's the only thing we want cutting back. And in this case, we also want to use a different end condition. So the end conditions are these ones here. At the moment, it is set to blind. So it's just blindly cutting away up to the length of, in this case, 40 millimeters. But we actually want that to always cut all the way through the part. So we want a through all condition. This will make sure that no matter how far the part changes, it may become thicker. It will always cut all the way through, at least in that direction. If we needed it in both directions, of course, then you'll change it to through all both. So it's cutting front and backwards, but due to the way we extruded it, it's always going to have the hole in the front anyway. We just want it to cut all the way to the back. So through all condition and click OK. And we can now see that we have our extrusion and our cut through our base part. One other thing that you might not be aware of is you can actually rename any of the features on the side here. So if you wanted to make a little more clear for yourself or maybe someone else that is working on the file, you may want to rename these features. You can do that by either clicking twice slowly on the feature and then typing in a name. So we'll call this one cylindrical extrusion. So you can do it that way, or you can do it by just clicking once to pick the feature and then pushing F2 on the keyboard, which will rename an object. And in this case, we want it to be square cut. So the name can be anything. Uh, you can also rename sketches as well. So we can just rename this one to say like default sketch or whatever you want. It can be any name. It's just whatever you feel might help you understand your model more. So this video just covers the basics on the extruded boss and the extruded cut commands, which are probably the most common material sort of modifications you're going to make in SOLIDWORKS. If you want to get more detail on the end conditions, I recommend watching the previous video specifically about end conditions. And so that's the end of the lesson. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's move on to the next lesson.